Welcome to Offsite, an ongoing video series that explores temporary exhibitions at the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art at the University of Oklahoma. My name is Mark White and I will be your host for this particular video series on our fall 2016 exhibition picturing Indian Territory 1819 to 1907. The exhibition offers a survey of the visual culture that helped to define the Indian and Oklahoma territories for 19th century audiences. Over the course of this series, we will speak with key individuals and visit sites significant to the rich histories of the territories and explore how those histories helped to define the state of Oklahoma. In the early 1880s, proponents for the settlement of Oklahoma Territory, known as the Boomers, began to stage illegal entries from Kansas. Toward the end of the decade, the U.S. government hosted the first in a series of land runs, and the Boomers were led into the Oklahoma Territory by Wild West showman Gordon William Lilly, better known as Pawnee Bill. Today we visit the Pawnee Bill Ranch and Museum to learn about this important historical figure and his role in the creation of the state of Oklahoma. Born in Bloomington, Illinois in 1860, Gordon William Lilly relocated with his family to Wellington, Kansas in 1870. Later that decade, he began working at the Pawnee Indian Agency near Black Bear Creek in Indian Territory. With a thorough knowledge of the Pawnee language, he joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West in 1883 as an interpreter and earned his new moniker, Pawnee Bill. During this time, he began to craft his public image in the tradition of Wild Bill Hickok and his mentor, Buffalo Bill. He often wore a cowboy hat with his hair long and a fringed buckskin coat and trousers to convey a Western persona clearly connected to the frontier of American Indian and Euro-American cultures. In 1886, he married Mae Manning, who would become known as one of the most talented sharpshooters of her generation, and they developed their own show in 1888. The show visited Wichita, Kansas City, Chicago, and Philadelphia with the hope of eventually embarking on an international tour. Despite advertising posters like this one that promoted Pawnee Bill's heroic status, lackluster attendance left his operation stranded on the East Coast. It was during the winter of 1888 that the Wichita Board of Trade approached Pawnee Bill with an offer to lead the Boomer camps out of Kansas and into the proposed Oklahoma Territory. The Boomers had been pushing for the opening of Oklahoma Territory since 1879 to no avail. And after the death of their leader, David Payne, the movement floundered. Pawnee Bill agreed to pose as the new leader of the Boomers, and he arrived in Wichita on December 22nd, reportedly to an ovation and a brass band. He felt his celebrity would help rally the cause, and by the next day, he had already planned a new invasion of Oklahoma. In March 1889, an amendment to the Indian Appropriations Bill opened the settlement of the Oklahoma Territory. The news spread through various Boomer camps like this one near Wellington, Kansas. A race for the available land was announced to heighten the spectacle of the event. On the day of the run, April 22nd, Lilly moved 3,000 settlers to Colonel George Washington Miller's 101 Ranch in the Cherokee Outlet. Lilly approached his role in the event as another opportunity for showmanship, riding the 20 miles to the area around modern-day Kingfisher in 65 minutes. He later admitted, the run was great publicity. The press of the whole country was full of it. This helped the show business wonderfully. By 1890, Pawnee Bill was calling himself the chief of the Oklahoma Boomers, and his 1902 biography dubbed Oklahoma a living monument to Pawnee Bill. Following his participation in the 1889 land run, Pawnee Bill and May Manning settled on a ranch at Blue Hawk Peak outside modern-day Pawnee, and in 1910 began building their mansion in the popular arts and crafts style. Pawnee Bill had finally achieved some degree of financial success by joining with Buffalo Bill, although his partner's poor finances always made the future uncertain. The home and ranch became property of the state of Oklahoma in 1962 and are now part of the Oklahoma Historical Society. 
To keep the legacy of Pawnee Bill alive, the museum and ranch hosts an annual reenactment of Pawnee Bill's historic Wild West. Popular performances from the original show are restaged for contemporary audiences.